Hey, welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to the One and a Half White Guys podcast. Uh, we're doing something a little different. We had some of the best time doing like a summer action recommendation from Nick's action movie knowledge that we enjoyed it so much we want to do something for horror. It's the spooky season. It's the perfect time to watch. And I think we'll drop this like early October this episode. That way people can have t- some time to. Yeah, the idea here is we would love to give some recommendations based on a couple of different. What would you call them? Categories. Categories. Would, categories where we would re- each recommend one movie and we have not told the other one what we're about to recommend. If we both recommend the same movie, it's about to be really funny. I'm going to tell, c- accuse Nick of plagiarism. But our first category, our first category, let's start off light. Okay. Shall we? Our first category is best for kids and adults. The best ones that you can put on for your kids, but it won't make you want to just fall asleep. Nothing too boring, but something a little fun for you. Nick, go first. What do you think? Mine has to be Casper. Casper. The Casper movie from 95. I'm a big fan of that one. I think it's very adorable. It's a nice little spooky Halloween-esque film. It even takes place on Halloween toward yep. the end. Yep. Christina Ricci's in it from Adam's Family fame, of course. So she kind of had that little horror background. background going for her. And Casper in it, he's so sweet. He just really wants to befriend her because he likes her. And ever all the shenanigans that go on at Whiff Staff Manor are fun. Like his uncles are really funny, even though they're such assholes. Yeah. It it's it it's a kids movie, but at times you'd be surprised how adultish it gets, like in the ways that it deals with death and a lot of the pop culture references that they give mm-hmm. at the time. Very much a product of its time. I, I think it's a wonderful movie though. Just a quick aside, have you seen Casper and Wendy with Hillary Duff? I have. Long my, time ago. My though. favorite thing in there is how brutal the roasts are to the ghost. Have you seen with how the ghosts are roasted by these other things? Uh, the, the witches? Yeah, they go, they're like, shut up, you secondhand smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I will not let you associate with this, this puff of, of secondhand smoke. Damn, these are fucking brutal. These are brutal <laughs> roasts of that. There's a good reference to the old Casper show in yeah. the movie because like, he all he wants is a friend and he's really lonely but at one point you just see him like channel surfing and it's and one of the channels is just go 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 <laughs> from the show yeah oh that's so funny <laughs> a little meta humor there yep all right so i gotta do mine I, I i went through so many and it was hard to really pick i mean there's one that features terror time again as a song if you know what i mentioned that was a huge one i wanted but the one i really really love and i do think is really spooky and fun is Paranorman. Paranorman is probably one of my favorite ones. It's made by the same people that I think made Coraline. Yeah. Leica. 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 Leica Studios is the one that did it. It's such a really fun ghost story and mystery of, of a town because it's all about trying to figure out the, the history behind a colonial witch. And it's like the Salem witch trials. There's all kinds of darkness in it a little bit. And, you know, the ostracized kid trying to find himself and help everyone, but also, mm-hmm. you know, be be part of it. I do love Paranorman. Paranorman is probably one of my favorites. Very, to, very to baby's have. first horror. Baby's first horror. Whereas also- Casper is just a kid's movie. A kid's movie, yeah. Yeah, there's not really horror to it. That Like, that's, they're ghosts. That's it. Yeah. But with Paranorman, there's some fucked up shit in that movie there's some darker stuff that still manages to retain a really good sense of humor yeah, about yeah, itself just a just a kid's movie and you know fine if you if you don't like that escape from zombie island <laughs> we'll throw that in there too scooby do on zombie see, island see, scooby do zombie island which is always fantastic the monsters cue, are real cue that fucking song right now and it's dead Our next category is best first date movie during spooky season. Okay, you got a shot. You're going to take them out on a date. It's going to be a movie date. You, they're going to come over. You're going to cook them dinner or something. Show that you got some good culinary skills. This and is, a, that you this is have, a very in, in, interesting uh, rom-com you're writing right now. What will you put on, Nathan? Okay. You I, go first now. This, this one was hard. This one was hard for me to figure out. I, I went through about three or four. I ended up going back to one movie and one movie in particular. And I'm really sorry. This does kind of ruin, may ruin date night. I, I said Scream. Scream. I, I said Scream. Scream is the quintessential fun slasher with enough meta commentary to, to just have a blast. There's just a bunch of other horror movie references. The Exorcist was on cable. It's PG-13. Got me thinking. PG. Bob, Bobby, if this is about the time I'm <laughs> with the crucifix and a pea soup, <laughs> nope, that was nope. my first keg party. No, we're not talking <laughs> the scary movie. But I, I got to give it to Scream. Scream is like a really fun. It just seems like a quintessential date night movie you have an incredible final girl in in nev campbell you got a fun story you got a simple you know killer and they're all young people right mm-hmm. they're young people this is a young matthew lillard young steve Ulrich, skeet Ulrich, right 
Skeet Ulrich. I almost yeah. said Steve Ulrich. <laughs> Steve Ulrich. Skeet Ulrich. Young uh, Steve Urkel. Uh, young Jamie Kennedy. All these people. Young Courtney Cox. And I, I, I got to give it to Scream. Uh, young Rose McGowan as well. Uh, go oh, ahead. Rose McGowan. For me, if for simplicity's sake, I got to give it to Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy Hollow? Okay. Sleepy Hollow is a beautiful, gothic little Halloween masterpiece. That's simple, yeah. It's just like this. It's just about the, head, it's about the Headless Horseman. It's a bit, you know, kind of a complicated plot involved sure. and whatnot as they, as they re- re- wrote up a, a lot more to it. It's, it's irresistible. I have loved this one for a while. This one was one that I... Again, when Blockbuster went out of business, you might know this story if you watch one of our other episodes. When Blockbuster went out of business, I went and bought a bunch of like horror movies as copies when they were selling other copies. Mm-hmm. Sleepy, Sleepy Hollow was one of them. So I'm really grateful that Sleepy Hollow is one I got to grow up with. Yep. Uh, I also throw this out. I feel like honorable mention for this category, we'll both agree with Beetlejuice easily. Easily. Sure, Beetlejuice sure. is a date night movie, 100%. I, I feel like that works especially. I believe pe- more people have seen Beetlejuice than Sleepy Hollow. I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. Something most people have seen, but still, if you got if you got to pick something out and you're in a crunch and you know, you're like, well, trust me, even if that spooky person has seen Beetlejuice, they're never going to turn it down watching it again. Next category, this is one I came up with. I thought this was fun. What to put on at a horror movie party or comma after you've had a few drinks and you know something you don't want to pay like a atten- halloween party something something you don't have to pay attention to that much you're going to be focused on things you're having a good time or something something that's like a perfect late night showing at halloween at a movie theater after people have been out yeah. drinking dressing up all that stuff what is a perfect movie nick now this might come as a bit of a cop out okay the halloweens any of the halloweens any of the halloweens just in a row you got people over they're here for hours maybe some are staying the night because there's drinks there's probably involved okay, there's lots okay, of food okay, okay. <laughs> We're, be, be responsible with whatever you're doing but you're saying the halloweens now john carpenter's halloween is an essential if you're a marathon like mm. what amc does one two three four five and six just in a row at a party and the worse they get the drunker people get the more entertaining it's going to be sure Fair enough. Put them on or just put AMC on. They're probably on AMC yeah, yeah, it's as, probably, as the party's going on. It's probably there. I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a different route. I'm taking a simple, fun slasher bloody, and that's Freddy vs. Jason. Freddy vs. Jason is a quintessential drunk movie for a dr- drunk horror movie or just party movie. The plot is simple. There's tons of gore. There's tons of kills. It's like Godzilla vs. Kong, except with these two titans of horror even though Freddy makes a slightly racist comment in there. Well, well <laughs> Kelly Rowland... Well, she did make a very homophobic comment toward <laughs> she him. She did make a... Listen, <laughs> it's not PC either way right now. How sweet. Dark meat. I love how we call out the, the homophobia and the racism, well, but, we, but we have no problem with the misogyny in oh, the movie. Oh, God. You think you're so smart, bitch, huh, bitch. <laughs> think you're so smart, huh, bitch. He sure is really skirting that line right there. But Freddy, Vers- I, I do love Freddy vs. Jason. That's a Halloween movie. That's a really good Halloween movie. That's a that's a that's a fun thing to have on at a party. It's simple and easy to watch. And if you've had a few drinks, got it, got to give it to you. Freddy vs. Jason. You know why I love that as a Halloween movie? Why? When I was a freshman in college and I went to the dining hall on Halloween to like have something to eat before I went out and did whatever I was going to do. Mm-hmm. Um. Freddy vs. Jason was playing on all the TVs. Yep. So just th- kind of that memory just kind of makes it stick in my mind. It's like, this is a Halloween movie. Halloween movie. All right. Let's move on to the fourth category. This is another one I came up with. I- I'll introduce it. We know it's shit, but we love it anyway. This is a horror <laughs> movie that the, the horror movies for each of us were just like, okay, this is really bad. But for some reason, we can't help but love it. This is a guilty pleasure, something to watch that you... Maybe even if, um, for my personal, if you view it through a different lens, through a different lens, you might actually really enjoy it, like I do. But I'm gonna let you take this. All right, I really want to hear. I yours. have to give it to the tech wonder, Unfriended. Unfriended <laughs> is is one of my favorite bad horror movies. I've been to see this in theaters like once. This is like high school drama with a ghost. This might as well be Degrassi with a vengeful spirit in it. The movie sucks. I'm not defending it. But if you view it through a lens of this is how bad high school is that also happens to have a ghost, this becomes really fucking funny. I love the movie. I, I gotta get. I love Unfriended. There isn't a single person to root for in that movie, Not except one the ghost. Fucking good person in the movie besides the ghost. And that's teenagers, though. I know. And They're little it's sociopaths. So that's why it's so fun. I love it. I, it's I love incredible. It. Everyone there deserves their fate. The only one that doesn't. <laughs> the only one that doesn't is maybe maybe uh, Ken. 
But at the end of the oh, day, the he, Doritos he, guy. He did the Doritos. Doritos. <laughs> Shout out to YMS for his review. Anyway, Nick, what about yours? Oh, okay. There's 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 a bunch I could go off of. Thousands, literally. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna give it to Idle Hands. Idle Hands. Yeah, huh? it's garbage. I love it so much. You want a good stoner Halloween movie? Devin Sawa's hand gets possessed Evil Dead 2 style and just starts murdering his friends, family, and the neighborhood all the while he's just trying to get a date with Jessica Alba. This is post Final Destination 1 too, as well, right? This is like... No, this is like right before, I think. Oh my God. This was never 1999. Mind. Final Destination was 2000. 2000, so it's around the same time. Yeah, yeah, he's just this stoner slacker idiot. His hand gets possessed, and the hand just makes him do all this crazy Evil Dead 2 shit. Yeah. And although, and Eldon Henson and Seth Green are in it as, friend, as his friends, they die and then just come back as ghosts oh, yeah. to like haunt him and just annoy him essentially. <laughs> it has such an entertainment quality to it. And a lot of the jokes surprisingly land, mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, which is helped by a lot of the set pieces, the gore, the characters. It, 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 it's not a tone deaf movie because it knows it's a, just a horror comedy, but I really do think maybe in re, in years to come, it might get a resurgence sure, or something, something like that. It, it, and, and Vivica A. Fox is in it as like this. She might as well be out of evil dead. Also, she's just like coming to like kill him because she knows who the demon is possessing him. And oh, so throughout, okay. she's just trying to kill him. Fair enough. <laughs> it's not, one of those painful to sit through stoner movies. Yeah. I really think if you know what it is going into it, mm -hmm. you will sit there and really enjoy yourself. It's a very relaxed kind of horror comedy. Sure. So I gotcha. check that one out. Definitely. I love idle hands. All right, let's move on to the final category. This is our personal recommendation. Uh, basically, a movie call we, a, we can't go through the season without watching. I'd call this a personal essential. Personal essential that yeah. we always watch every horror movie every season. every spooky season it's one it's one that we just can't we just perfectly fine with if it comes on tv we're gonna let it play nick go ahead what do you think personal movie recommendation i think okay. you know what it okay, is okay go ahead who's the dummy now oh my god <laughs> now who's the dummy I love James Wan's Dead Silence very much. That one is a horror. That one's a Halloween essential for me, again, because Joey and I watched it one Halloween together. Got it. Okay. So, it's, so it's a, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these picks, they either take place on Halloween or I watch them during past Halloweens and they, they, Either they left such an impact on me, like a positive one, or it just kind of so felt got like a, a very, mental a value. very sentimental like attachment to to them because they were Halloween viewed. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. Dead Silence. This one also is not a good movie. No. <laughs> he can attest to that, but we're not talking about him right now. We're talking about me. This is me. Audience. Shut the fuck up. And Dead Silence is this. If you are afraid of puppets, of dummies, ventriloquist dummies, marionettes, anything. You this movie will it'll just rage your phobia to like like terror levels essentially sure, like sure. Th there is some I did think this movie was pretty creepy the first time I saw it sure. I watch it now and I'm just like this is silly this is goosebumps for the time okay yeah. this is goosebumps with gore uh, it, 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 essentially but I really love it it's a creepy little horror story that has to do with like killer ventriloquist dummies and a witch. And Ryan Quantin from True Blood is like, he sucks in it, honestly. He's just so like half asleep. Like the whole movie's just like, I wonder what's going on. Why did my wife die mm -hmm. in that mysterious circumstance where her jaw was ripped off? <laughs> He's just so sorry. He's just like, are you on Quaaludes in this movie, bro? But it's James Wan, so you know there's lots of good style and, uh, and, and, and kills and atmosphere to it. There really is value to this one. Watch this, and it, it, if you do check it out, tell me you don't think this is great to watch during Halloween. All right, so now for a real recommendation. What I fuck with you. What I'm gonna say is, it was hard. It was hard for me to narrow one thing down. The first thing that came to my mind was Evil Dead Two, but 
I remembered a second one that takes place on Halloween. I have to give I the one. What I, what, well, I know what it is. What do you think it is? Night of the Demons. Not quite. That is really? a good. I do love Night of the Demons. I do love Night of the Demons. But I, oh I like. God, I like give that one. In a, it's a great. It's a great. Night of the Demons is great. I'm not going to sit here and say it's not good. I do love it. Lenaya quickly fucking knocks it out of the park. Every The goth girl does too. I forget her name. I think the movie ends on Halloween night. I love Ginger Snaps. Ah. I love the original Ginger Snaps. Ginger That's Snaps is right. so good. Like You showed me Ginger Snaps. Ginger Snaps is good. It's got these two girls... Uh, Catherine Newton, who would go on to be like a special, mm-hmm. not, not Catherine Newton. Catherine Newton's in Catherine fucking Isabel. Lisa Frankens. Catherine Isabel. Catherine Isabel and oh God, what the fuck's her? Emily Perkins is the Bridget, the younger one. We just we just looked it up now, but she does phenomenal as well. Regardless, it's uh, two Canadian girls that are like just spooky, depressed. They get one of them gets bitten by a werewolf and slowly starts to change, and it becomes this metaphor for growing up and. The PMS cycle yep. and all kinds of different things. And it's just kind of spooky and terrifying. It's like a well done suburban horror movie. And we even got like a couple people that would go on to be in more uh, horror movies like Catherine that. Isabel. Catherine Isabel is in Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah. <laughs> what are you seeing him? I don't know. But he has a cute ass. Babe, make me ask you twice, okay? Just like this ginger would never stand, would never put up with this, <laughs> this bullshit. Not, so fun to watch. And it's just a good creature feature. It's a good werewolf movie. We don't have as many good creature features as much anymore. There's a few. Uh, there's a new Wolfman coming out. I'm what? excited for that. You don't guy. like the Meg movies? Nope. Uh, <laughs> so regardless, I just love, uh, I love that. It's a great story. And even like the second and third ones are okay. But I do love Ginger Snaps. These are our Halloween essentials. These are the ones. These, we, are, these uh, are some good categories. That ones we'll we got to pick. Uh, here's mine. You can watch. I'll have the list that shows up probably like boom. Nick, you can see is right there. There we go. Perfect. Spooky season of time to watch these movies. Enjoy them. They're a lot of fun and just a great time to watch. And, uh, you know, feel free to tell <laughs> us down in the comments if you want to answer to like our categories and what you would think or what you don't think or what we missed. Uh, let us know. God, spooky season's the time for all kinds of horror movies. By all means. And even the ones that we that we give our honorable mentions to, by all means, check those out as well. Mm-hmm. I think that'll do it for us. Thank you for watching this special episode of the One and a Half White Guys podcast. Be sure to follow us, rate us, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast from. And don't forget to follow us on our Instagram at One and a Half White Guys Podcast, on TikTok at One and a Half White Guys Pod, and now on our YouTube, which is hopefully where you're watching this at One and a Half White Guys. And be sure to tell a friend to listen to the podcast where we say we're going to talk about a movie, and we kind of talk about a movie. In fact, we talk about several movies. We talk in about this. several movies. And if you want to see more of us, be sure to go to the Nerd Enthusiast YouTube channel where we exclusively have our show, The Weird, The Bad, and The Bloody where we review the weirdest, baddest, and bloodiest movies of the, of the 80s, 80s, 90s, 90s, and 2000s. And 2000s. Which arguably any of these could make it on. And let me tell you, there were a lot of those in each decade. They can make it onto any of our recommendations. That's it, guys. Enjoy Halloween. Enjoy your spooky season. We will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>